Why do some UX designers rely on jargon and specialized tools? I mean, is that an attempt at job security? So I think uh, the, the jargon and the specialized tools have come up with design over time. Uh, we've just never had to define or clarify those tools or, or show people how we do our work in the past because we've had our own phase of software design to do stuff. And so people never really looked in and said, hey, why, why are you kerning that type that way? Sure. Or why are you building you know, 45 layers in your Photoshop document or your Illustrator <laughs> file? Um, <laughs> And, and that's so, so we've had those we've had those those elements in our process for years. It's just that now there is a much greater need to work more productively as a cohesive cross-functional team. And as people come into our process, as we bring people in, they don't understand what we're talking about yeah. or how we do our work. And to explain that to someone uh, is challenging does perhaps make you feel like, hey, you know what, maybe I'm not the only one who can be a designer, right? Right. And so there, there's definitely an aversion, at least up front, initially, to demystifying that process and those, and those tools and the jargon and so forth. Why do you think that designers should open source their process? I mean, what is the benefit for a designer there? So I think the days of the hero designer or the hero developer are, are gone. Mm -hmm. The teams that are successful today are cross-functional, highly collaborative teams. And for, a, for teams to work that way, people need, there needs to be transparency between the different disciplines on the team. And the members of the team need, need to understand what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And so by open sourcing the design process, by demystifying it, we bring people who are not designers by primary trade or profession or by job title into our world, show them what we do, show them the challenges of what we do. Design is hard. You know, I, th I think, frankly, by, by mystifying the process and building this black box design approach that, that's been around for, for a long time, uh, people think that design is easy. You know, we'll just go and make it beautiful and ta-da, it's mm -hmm. done. Uh, as opposed to bringing people in and saying, look, we balance a lot of very difficult things into the placement of every pixel and every workflow. There's, uh, the, you know, the customer, there's usability, there's workflow, there's the brand, there's the business's needs. All those things go into every decision that's made about where to put in the pixels. And by bringing folks into it, they start to get a sense of that. They can voice an opinion on it as well, and they begin to own the product much more cohesively than they would have if we just handed them a design to implement right. or to market. That's really interesting. I mean, you introduce the intricacies of somebody's work, and that also introduces more respect for that work. Right? Exactly, exactly. So. Let's say designers want to do this. They want to become more transparent in their process. What are the first steps that they need to take? I think the first thing designers need to do is to step out from behind their monitors much earlier than they would have in the past. Mm. So instead of waiting until all the pixels are dry on the screen, sure. you know, or w w whether you're wireframing or whether you're, you're, you're actually doing visual design or whatever it is, uh, get your design out in front of your colleagues in raw forms much more frequently um, and much more regularly mm -hmm. so that they can see, hey, I'm thinking about solving our business problem this way. What do you think? And, right. and what you've done is you spend a half hour sketching out an idea. So literally a sketch, a napkin sketch or a rough wireframe or something, and get some feedback on it. So they can say, you know what, that's great, but it's going to take us six weeks to call up the, the data that's needed to make this work. Maybe we can figure out something else. Let me work with you on that. Mm. And the, the, the lost time there is an hour, a half hour of the designer's time. And what you're doing, again, is you're bringing people into your world, into your process, but you have to proactively do that. Right. This is a designer-led initiative. No, no, no one's going to come to you and say, hey, show me your napkin sketch, <laughs> right? <laughs> not, not usually. No, no not usually, no. right? And so, so it's, it, the onus is on the, on the designers to step out from behind their monitors and, and pull people in and say, listen, I just, I just mocked this up really quickly. I, I'd love to get your take on it. This is what I'm thinking. Right. And start, just start that conversation. It's going to be awkward at first. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you'll get, it'll get easier over time and people will be more involved. But you have to legitimately be open to the feedback too, right? Absolutely. Not just pay lip service to it. Yeah, I, I mean, right. absolutely, yes. You, and, and, and then once you get the feedback, Whatever you choose to use mm -hmm. and whatever you choose to discard should be communicated back out to the folks you got feedback from. So, hey, you remember that napkin sketch I showed you yesterday? Yeah. I thought you had a really good idea about reconfiguring the, the, the flow of the, of the checkout process. But um, I still think it's going to be better to word it this way. 
So this is, this is the iteration on that. And so you're communicating back out, and you're saying, I heard you. I took some of it. I discarded some of it. Here's why I didn't use the other parts of it. And that keeps the conversation going right. in a much more, pr much more productive conversation than saying, your idea is stuff and I don't want to use it. Sure, sure. Last question for you. In your session description, you noted yeah. that, <clears throat> quote, designers are also product people. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. What does that entail and how do you see that playing out? Sure. Uh, I think you, you know, every, uh, every design decision is a product decision. And by that sense, every product decision is a design decision as well. For example, if you think about a product decision to the extent of where do you put the paywall, right? That affects the design of the application, the things that you can do with it. And so designers affect the experience of the product. They essentially affect the product in the same way that everybody else does. And so not thinking of them as, as product people, I think, is a mistake. I think they, they dr designers directly affect the, the workflow, the success, and the uh, the, the eventual outcome of the software development process and, and the product creation process um, because every, every color choice, every workflow choice, every word choice on the page affects the success of that product. And so I think it's, it's important to consider design as a part of a holistic product development process and not just as something that we slap on at the end to make it pretty. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you very much.